Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Just as we finally get some beautiful, calm, serene, summery weather here on Whidbey Island, we're headed into a storm this morning. In our gospel reading, we hear the story of Jesus on the sea and the storm whips up. Um, and we are pushed to reflect on the storms in our own lives and the storms that we experience in life. And we hear this word, peace, be still. So even in the midst of the storms we face, we hear the voice of our Lord here today saying, peace, be still. Welcome as we experience that peace together. I invite you to join me as we begin worship by, by confessing our sins together and hearing God's word of forgiveness. Please stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, as scripture tells us, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Dear friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Christ. 
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from Job 38. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the seas with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther? And here shall you, your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Be 
Please read responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Those who are as redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hands of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Who went to the to sea in ships and plied their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkens and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper and quieted the waves of the sea. Then were they glad because of the calm, and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. Second reading is from 2 Corinthians. As we work together with him, we encourage you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of, the sal- of salvation. We are putting no obstacles in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful spirit, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as, treated as impostors, and yet are true as unknown, and yet are well known as dying, and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our hearts, our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with him in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. 
This time I'd like to invite the children forward to join us for children's time. I'm talking slow so if they don't start playing the music until Mia gets up here. See, that's a little trick I learned. Go ahead and have a seat. All right, good. Thank you, Mia. Good morning, children of God. Welcome to worship today. As you can see, sometimes these children's times, I like to do a little show and tell kind of thing. And, and I brought a, a life jacket with me today. Let me see if I can stand it up here. There we go. So I'm sure you guys know how life jackets work. Uh, we live on an island, for crying out loud. We're surrounded by water. So I hope you know what they are and how they work. But um, they, you put them on and you clip those clips, right? And it hugs you kind of tight. They should be pretty snug on you. And uh, if you end up in the water and need help, uh, the life jacket will keep your head above water. It'll keep you from sinking down. It will potentially save your life. That's why they call it a life jacket, because it can save your life. And so if you're in a boat, if you're in a small boat, you should always, always, always wear one, whether you're a grown-up or not. If you're in a kayak or a canoe or a small boat, you should always wear a life jacket. If you're in a bigger boat... It's probably okay just to have it nearby as long as everybody knows where they are and can get to them uh, pretty quickly. That's your public service announcement, I guess, for the day. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, life jackets are super important. They can save your life. They keep your head above water. They keep you from sinking down, right? In our gospel reading for today, we heard about that storm that the disciples were caught in. They were on a boat, weren't they? They were on a fishing boat and a big storm arose and there was wind and there was waves and they were sinking. Their boat was sinking. But thankfully they had Jesus on board their boat and Jesus acted sort of as a life jacket for them. He was a life preserver for them. Uh, By his powerful word, he calmed the storm. So the wind quieted and the waves calmed down and they could uh, get things under control, right? Jesus kept them from sinking, He saved their lives. He gave them life. He was like a life jacket to them. Life for us can get kind of rough sometimes. We live in a place where we do get storms, especially in the fall and the winter. We get storms blowing through here pretty regularly. You guys know all about that. I know uh, you've had power outages and other problems that have been caused by storms. But there's other things that happen in life that make things topsy-turvy and difficult. And when we experience storms of any kind we can remember that Jesus is with us. That Jesus is like a life jacket for us. He wraps himself around us and he holds us tight. He keeps us from sinking. He keeps our heads above water. He, he gives us life in him. He holds us tight and he will never let us go. So whenever you feel like you're caught in a storm, you can remember that Jesus has a hold of you and he's not going to let you sink. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are indeed like a life jacket to us. Uh, You hold us tight in your love and grace. You keep us from sinking down and you give us life. Help us to know that you are always near, especially when we find ourselves in storms of various kinds. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The disciples had seen lots of bad weather on the Sea of Galilee before. Four of them were fishermen, and so Peter and Andrew, James and John especially, would have seen plenty of wind and waves on this particular body of water. The Sea of Galilee was known for its sudden changes of weather. It could turn threatening at a moment's notice. 
And so they were no strangers to storms. But this one was different. This one hit them like a bomb cyclone. It hit them suddenly and with great fury. A great windstorm arose, St. Mark tells us, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. This wasn't something that they could navigate around. This wasn't a situation where they could drop anchor and wait it out. They were sinking now. They were going down. You can imagine the terror in the eyes of even those seasoned fishermen as they furiously tried to bail water out of, the, out of the boat, perhaps with buckets, perhaps just with their cupped hands. You can imagine the wind screaming in their ears, making it hard to hear each other. You can imagine the chaos, the white knuckle grip as they heaved up and down with the waves. You can imagine the nausea, the gasping to catch their breath, the existential panic coursing through their veins as they truly believed that they were all about to die. And throughout all of this, Jesus was in the stern, asleep. Yeah, I think it's funny too. You can chuckle. (laughs) And I especially think it's funny that St. Mark includes this little detail that he was asleep on a cushion. (laughs) This little detail provides a sharp contrast between what Jesus, the Lord of all creation, is experiencing and what his disciples are going through. The disciples are soaked and they're terrified and they're probably puking over the side of the boat while Jesus is asleep on a cushion. I think it's funny too, but the disciples did not think this was funny at all. They finally shook Jesus awake, saying, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And Jesus, who had managed to sleep through the howling of the wind, Jesus, who had managed to sleep through the pounding of the rain, now he woke up. One Bible commentary I read this week beautifully described this moment by saying, quote, Jesus is like the mother who sleeps through all kinds of racket. <clears throat> But at the slightest noise from her little baby, she instantly awakes. I love that. Once awake, Jesus' first words were not to the disciples, but rather to the sea itself. Peace, be still, Jesus said. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. Now Jesus could speak to them. Why are you afraid, he asked. Have you still no faith? These were cutting questions. They pointed to the disciples' lack of faith in him. You can almost make out a tone of mild disappointment in Jesus' voice. Do you really think that I don't care about you? Have you learned nothing about me yet? Do you still not trust me? But behind these cutting rhetorical questions was a promise The implicit promise behind these questions is that the disciples didn't need to be afraid. They simply needed to have faith in him. They simply needed to trust him. They simply needed to trust that Jesus was more powerful than any storm. And now they were starting at least to get it. Filled with great awe, they said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This seems to me to be another rhetorical question. There's only one with that kind of power, and now they're starting to put two and two together, aren't they? Our lives are filled with storms like the one the disciples faced. Sometimes these storms are quite literal. We have storms uh, here on Whidbey Island. They come through pretty regularly, of course. Uh, But there are much worse storms that have been making themselves known across our country. This spring has been a very bad season for tornadoes in places like Oklahoma and Nebraska and Iowa, where extremely powerful twisters have burst through cities and towns and homes, carving paths of destruction and chaos, leveling barns and buildings, tossing debris in every direction, sending people into shelters for fear of their lives. You probably follow some of these horrible terrifying stories. So sometimes the storms are quite literal. 
Other times, however, these storms are more figurative. They are relational, or they are medical, or they are spiritual. These storms might not feature literal wind and waves, but they bring a howling noise to our ears, making it hard to hear God's voice. They bring a nauseating, topsy-turvy unending of everything we once thought to be stable. They make us feel like we're sinking. They can fill us with terror, with, with an existential panic. There's all kinds of these storms that, that blow through our lives. Very recently, I had one of my dearest, closest friends share with me that his wife of more than 30 years came to him out of the blue and said, I've accepted a job in another city and I'm leaving you. This hit him like a bomb cyclone. This is a couple that my wife and I have known for probably 25 of those years. They're, they're godparents to one of our sons. It's a huge shock to us, too. And you can say that these things never really happen suddenly, and you'd be right, but it can feel that way in the moment, and that's how it felt to him. In talking to him over video chat, you could almost see him sinking. You could almost kind of see him sinking into his chair. You could sense him trying desperately to keep his head above water, holding on for dear life, trying to steady himself as his entire world had been upended by this sudden storm. In the past few weeks, I've had two different mothers sobbing into my chest at the loss of their respective sons. While the underlying causes had been brewing on the horizon for some time in both situations, the loss hit them like a sudden violent storm, and tears fell like a cloudburst. Recently, I've sat with people going through brutal treatments for cancer. I've had conversations with spouses who have watched their beloved suffer through these treatments. And sometimes I notice this barely restrained frustration that Jesus would let their beloved suffer so much. Sometimes there's this hint of a sense that Jesus must be sleeping. There's a sense that, that uh, there are questioning of whether Jesus really cares about their beloved or not. But in each of these spiritual storms that I've observed in these past several weeks, there has been in each of them this moment of calm that has come about. In each situation I've cited, there's been a moment where the howling wind has ceased and the noise of the storm has stopped screaming in people's ears long enough to hear Jesus' voice saying, Peace. Now, I'm not saying that these storms were instantaneously and permanently ended. I'm not naively saying that these people no longer had any storm damage lingering in their lives. But in each of these cases, there was this moment of calm that opened up such that Christ's peace could be heard and experienced. When I checked in on my friend a few days later, he had at least worked some things out with his wife, but even more, he had a renewed sense that Christ had a hold of him. Those grieving mothers were able to take a deep breath as they entrusted their sons to Christ's promise. That frustrated spouse watching his wife endure chemo came to see in the faith of his beloved that Jesus was not sleeping at all. Since going through my own storm of grief a couple of years ago now, I've been telling people how much the experience felt to me like waves crashing over me one after another. There's that initial crash that leaves you gasping for air, but then for a bit the water goes out, giving you time to catch your breath before another wave comes crashing over you. While everyone's experience of grief is different, I've had so many people come and say to me, yes, yes, that's just how it is. Eventually those waves start to lessen. Eventually they mostly subside, although there are sneaker waves that can come pound on you from time to time. 
But even in the worst of the storm, there are these moments when the waves go out, when, when there's this moment of calm. There are these moments when the winds are no longer screaming in your ears and you can hear Jesus speaking into the storm, Peace, be still. There are moments when you realize that Jesus is not sleeping, that he has heard your cry, that he does care, and that he is more powerful than the storm trying to drag you down. Even the wind and the sea obey him. Since the days of the apostles, a ship or a boat has been a symbol for the church. You've heard me say this before. We even call the place where the worshipers gather the nave. You've heard me say that before, too. It comes from the Latin word novice, meaning ship, which is also where we get the word navy. That's where you are right now. You're in the nave. You're in the boat. As Christians, we are not promised fair winds and following seas. But Jesus is not asleep in this boat. He hears your cries. He knows your needs. He cares about you. Here in this boat today, he silences the wind screaming in our ears so that we might hear his voice, so that we might hear him speaking into the storm saying, Peace, be still. Here in this boat today, he assures us that we do not need to be afraid no matter what kind of storms we face in life. Here in this boat, he strengthens and renews us in faith by the speaking of his powerful word. The Lord Jesus is on board. He is with us, and he will get us through every storm. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you're able as we sing. Let us now confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us now pray for the church, for the world, and for all people in any need. Please join me now in prayer. Eternal Father, you are indeed strong to save. Give us faith to cling to your dear Son in every danger that threatens to undo us. Make your church an ark of safety against the floodwaters of sin and chaos. Bring many aboard through faith in Christ that they would know the peace of his saving love. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, we pray for your world. We pray for seafarers, fishermen, our Navy and Coast Guard, and all they protect, defend, and rescue. Still the storms they face and deliver everyone in peril from wind, wave, and every enemy. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are overwhelmed by waves of suffering and sorrow, especially those who fear you are asleep and question your care. Assure them that you are indeed awake and present for them. Help them to trust that you awaken to their every cry. Lord, in your mercy. Giver of life, we lift up to you those in our congregation who are celebrating birthdays in the week ahead, including Ben Bruland, Natalie Stone, Dottie Dottie Gilbert, John Klein, Kelly Fosna Rosenbaum, John Solon, Rick Culbertson, Jenny Danielson, and Randy Wood. Bless their celebrations with the joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you establish the covenant of marriage and call your people to hold it in honor. And so with gladness today, we honor Wade and Angela Stone as they celebrate their wedding anniversary this week. Uphold them joyfully in your steadfast love and make their vows a strong shelter to withstand every storm. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we pray for our congregation, for all whom you have gathered here this day into your boat. Calm our storms. Help us to hear your voice over the howling winds around us. Give us the peace only you can give. And then send us out into this storm-tossed world to share your gospel with every shipwrecked soul, that they would find safe harbor in your care. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you all. Invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another.
All right, a few announcements to highlight for you this morning. <clears throat> First of all, I hope you came hungry today uh, because we have a fantastic brunch uh, in our fellowship hall. This is sponsored by We Cares or Whidbey Island Cares. Uh, this is a group that uh, is a community group, and it has many of our members who have been part of it, a lot of members from our church who have been part of it uh, for some time now. It's a group who formed a couple of years ago, I want to say, uh, with the purpose of bringing a Ukrainian family to Whidbey Island. They have done that. In fact, that family is with us this morning. Uh, welcome to the Fedorachenkos. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but welcome. Glad that you are here today. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, having achieved that, uh, that uh, mission, they are in the process of winding things down with that ministry and today's sort of a celebratory brunch uh, and they are inviting all of you to join us in that celebration with lots of great food. There will be a free, uh, free will offering there for the, um, for the meal today, uh, which will be a gift uh, to this Ukrainian family. Uh, so please do join us for this We Cares brunch immediately following worship today. Uh, also today, I will be offering assisting minister training. If you would like to do what Sheila's doing today and other assisting ministers have done in weeks past, uh, reading the scriptures, helping with communion, etc., I will do a training uh, right after worship. So you can meet me up here at the chancel area. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. You'll still be able to enjoy the brunch. It takes 10 or 15 minutes max uh, to walk, just kind of walk through the paces and point out a few things uh, for you. So meet me up here in the chancel area right after worship today, and I'll walk you through that. Don't need to have previously signed up, just, just show up. Tuesday, we have our men's lunch and Bible study happening at noon. All men are invited to join us Tuesday for lunch and Bible study. And next Sunday, we will have another big bash. We will be celebrating the retirement of Martha Ellis after 40... We're not celebrating her retirement so much as we're celebrating <laughs> her, uh, her years of service. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> celebrating 42 years of faithful ministry here at our, our, in our congregation, uh, Martha's retirement party next Sunday after worship. We'll have a big cake and uh, another opportunity for you to give uh, for Martha's retirement gas fund. We'll, we'll say more about that next week. Um, just FYI, I'm going to be gone a lot this week. We're leaving Tuesday morning, and I'm coming back Saturday uh, to take our youngest son to Wazoo for uh, orientation. This is not the big drop-off. This is just an orientation thing. Um, but uh, while he's doing that, I'm going to spend time with my middle son, who's at Wazoo right now, doing an internship on campus, uh, and see my dad up in Idaho. So I'll, we'll be driving back on Saturday. I will be here next Sunday. I worked ahead uh, to be ready for next Sunday. My wife and I have cooked up a little dialogue dra drama sermon that we're going to do that I'm looking forward to. Uh, so I will be back Sunday, but I'll be gone Tuesday through Saturday. So just FYI about that. Uh, the insert has more announcements. I hope that you'll take a look at that. The connection card has some upcoming summer events that you can RSVP for. Uh, if you know you're going to attend, that helps us to have head counts for those different things. Uh, our worship continues now with some special music. Thanks, guys.
Thank you, Ron and Jan and Sharon, so much. Our worship continues now with the offering.
ask him. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opens to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Dear friends, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus comes to us now through bread and wine. Come, for all is ready. Please be seated.
please do. And now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace this day and always. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.